on to qualifying from Senegal. Round two of Extreme E and Veloce hoping for a better weekend than they had in Saudi Arabia. Stefan Sarazan had that huge crash, which meant that Jamie Chadwick got no seat time at all this time round. She was on a big push herself, did well to hold on to that as she continues to learn the trade of off-road driving. Stefan Sarazan took over for the second part of the run and a much more satisfactory result. Instead of a big crash, they finished in P6. Second car out on course was Acciona Sainz, Carlos Sainz, King Carlos, winner of the Dakar, a World Rally Champion, and that's, that's what you do when you're a World Rally Champion. Big jumps, he was absolutely flying, literally, and on the clocks as well. Laia Sanz had had her turn in the car, and unfortunately for them, when she was out, the car ground to a halt out on course. So a DNF for Sainz. Similar issues, in fact, for Andretti United with Timmy Hansen and Katie Munnings. A couple of hard landings for Timmy. He stopped the car out. It looked like it was game over. He did manage to get it restarted in the end, but some three minutes lost. They were probably going to be relying on bad luck for other teams to get through to the semi-finals this time round. They had a puncture last time for Mullings, and they still made it, so all to play for, never give up. On to RXR, Rosberg Extreme Racing, winners of the first round in Saudi Arabia with Johan Christophson and Molly Taylor. They won every session in Saudi, got a penalty for a speeding in the switch zone in one of them, which dropped them down, but in terms of being fastest on the time sheet, they were there. Not so this time round. They got P3, which is a good result, but they will want to be right at the top of the table. Work to do for the super quick pairing. Apt Cupra, another team looking for a better weekend than they had in Saudi Arabia. Two big crashes for Claudia Herc. And in fact, Claudia here having more bad luck. She wasn't very well. So the team requested from the championship that they use the female championship driver. So extra coming in and handing over to Jutta Kleinsmith. Kleinsmith won the Dakar here on this very beach 20 years ago. And she was on incredible form. Unfortunately, she left to get into the car slightly too early in the switch zone. And that meant they were given a 15 second penalty, which would see them in P4, but a great run all the same. X44, Lewis Hamilton's Extreme E team, nine time World Rally Champion Sebastian Loeb at the wheel and in fine form. It was so close on the timesheets at the top of the table, but no mistakes from Loeb. Remember, we saw a small one from him in Saudi last time. He didn't drop off the side of the tube, didn't drop off the top of a few, though. Big jumps are plenty. And then it was Gutierrez who took the wheel for the second part of the run. She was so quick, they went fastest overall. Segi TV, Chip Ganassi Racing, Sarah Price and Kyle Leduc, another team who'd had a shocking time in Saudi Arabia. Two crashes for Kyle Leduc, not so this time round. Bottom of the screen, he kept lighting it up with green sectors, absolutely flying. No one could match him through the last part of the lap. On aggregate between the two drivers, they weren't quite quick enough to go to the top of the table. It was P2 behind X44, but just 4.2 seconds back. This weekend, Kevin Hansen covering for Jensen Button at JBXE. Kevin, a European Rallycross champion, He's done some Baja style driving as well, and even tested the car before. Of course, brother to Timmy Hansen from Andretti United. Michaela Arlen Kotlinski still learning the differences between driving on tarmac and driving on the loose, but a great performance from the new pairing to go P5 at the end of Q1. Final car into Q1, Excite Energy Racing. Ollie Bennett and Christine GZ had spent some time together in the UK preparing for this round, driving rally cars and buggies. The Welsh conditions, though, somewhat different from what they found in Senegal. They were a little way off the pace in free practice, and they'll need to find a bit more speed in Q2 if they want to make it through to the semis. They end Q1, P7. On to Q2, the final qualifying session. This one will decide who goes through to the semi-finals and who ends up in the shootout. Now, a change to regulations this weekend means that the same driver can't always take the start. You have to rotate. So whoever takes the start in Q1 will take the start tomorrow in the semi-finals. If you take the start in Q2, that means you will take the start in the final, assuming, of course, that you get there. Another good run for Veloce. Jamie Chadwick and Stefan Sarazan with their moments, a bit sideways, kicking up the sand. After a good run by both drivers, they end the session in P5, into the semi-finals. Much better result than Saudi.
Andretti United, Katie Munnings and Timmy Hansen. Munnings at the wheel for the first part of her run. So difficult for these two drivers. Last time out, Katie had a puncture, fought back from it. They made the semi-finals. They ended up P2 this time round with that huge three and a half minute loss when Hansen was at the wheel and had to reset the car in Q1. They knew that all they could do was get the car to the finish as quickly as they could and hope that maybe there would be issues for others. We'd seen a couple of cars stop in the morning and they were thinking if the same thing happened in the afternoon, they might still make it. Also, points up for grabs in the super yeah, sector. It's, it's so so hard plenty to judge of opportunities every bump, to keep trying. Uh, you can hit the same bike twice, so never the same result the car, from so. the weekend. But ultimately, yeah, um, challenging not weekend, I think. To make uh, yeah, to the semi-finals. They end the day P8. Rosberg Extreme Racing, Molly Taylor, watch this, over the crest, she gets the car really sideways, guns the throttle, straightens the steering out, pulls it back down again, only lost a couple of seconds, bottom of the screen, you can see at this point, they were well up on their competitors and looking to go towards the top of the table. Molly Taylor, full concentration, this place is a real roller coaster. there is a big risk-reward ratio here, how quickly do you want to send it over some of these crests, there you go, rear end of the car kicking up really high, if you risk it, you can make the time up. But if you get it wrong, you lose a ton. This last sector here, Carl Leduc has showed everyone in Q1 just how quickly you can go through it. Christopherson and Taylor were trying really, really hard. Ultimately, not quite enough pace to go top of the table at the end of the day, P2. At Cupra, Jutta Kleinschmidt, Dakar legend, the only female driver to win the legendary Dakar rally. We spoke to her a couple of days ago and she said she was so nervous on the final stage of Dakar 20 years ago to the year. She came down the beach here at that Rose and won that incredible, gruelling race. She retired from racing a while ago. She wasn't sure herself whether she had the pace. Oh, she absolutely had the pace. She was flying. A brilliant replacement for Claudia Hurtgen, who, as we said earlier on today, wasn't very well. She handed over to Matthias Ekstrom. Big push again, they were around eight seconds off the pace at this point. Ekstrom tried really hard to see if he could make up the time difference, but not quite enough again. They end the session an impressive P3. X44, Sebastian Loeb and Christina Gutierrez, so impressive. Both drivers on that first run and look at the margin they came into this on. 15 seconds up, Gutierrez at this point had actually lost a few seconds. Sebastian Loeb had said in an interview earlier on in the day that he had his eye on Kyle LeDuc and Sarah Price saying they are quick, we need to watch for them. Gutierrez fighting the car on board, she made up some of that lost time towards the end of that, got the gap back up to around 20 seconds before handing over to the nine-time World Rally Champion Sebastian Loeb. We ride on board with him now, look at the throttle trace, top right of your screen up and down over the crest, feathering the throttle and the brake, trying to settle the nose of the car, but carry as much pace as you can through the lap. He was extending their lead out front, making the job very hard for Price and Leduc, who was still to come for Segi TV Chip Ganassi Racing. Was this going to be enough to hold onto the team two spot? Minus 30 seconds on everyone who'd gone before, but it was going to come down to the cars who were yet to come. They go top for now. You ride on board with Kyle Leduc down the front straight, heading down almost onto the shoreline, onto the flat sand, edging out every tenth. Look at this, 6.2 seconds up, he was flying, and then disaster. The car ground to a halt in the woods section, pulled over to the side of the road. The American off-road racing legend clambered out of the car immediately. Sarah Price looking gutted in the command center. He went to all the reset points on the car. They figured it was going to be a tiny electrical issue from the impact climb back in, eventually got it going, but the time loss was huge and their semi-final hopes were over. JBXE, now they know that with the issues for three other teams, they'd almost certainly booked a spot in the semi-finals. All the cars to come could now play it just that little bit more safely. Kayla artling Kotlinski chucking the car through that railroad section. You cannot get offline through the woods, it's so narrow. The ruts had built up so much. And you can see the sand flying up. Impressive performance from her and from Kevin Hansen as well, standing in this weekend for Jensen Button. Jensen, the team boss, had sent them a message basically on Twitter in the morning just saying, go for it, send it. That was what Kevin did, but with a mind on the fact that others had had issues and if they got to the finish, they knew they'd make it into the semi-final. So a safe run for Hansen and for Arlen Koplinski. They end the day in P4. 
Solid job by Kevin Hansen on his debut for the team. More work to do tomorrow. Excite Energy Racing on to their second run. Now, in Q1, they ended P7. It looked like they weren't going to have the pace to challenge the top teams. But again, knowing that there had been issues for now three of the front-running teams, they knew that they were going to make it through to the semi-finals. They made it through to the semi-finals last time out in Saudi Arabia. And Christine GZ taking a slightly less aggressive approach. I still think a three, four foot air is fairly aggressive, but a tidy drive by her, bringing the car back to her teammate, Ollie Bennett. Bennett, we thought Bennett was going to lift on his run, but if you watch his run pass down by the side of the woods, he buries the nose of the car off one of these crests. It might be this next one here. Yes, it is. Uh, so digging a huge hole in the track. Track development here has been absolutely key. Some of the drivers saying that it's got much slower between Q1 and Q2. So another solid performance from the Excite pairing, and they will make it through to the semis. On to the final car in qualifying, Sands and Sites. No hope with the DNF of making it through, but five championship points were up for grabs on the super sector. It's sector two, the back of the course, the most risky part of the course. Sands had a crack at it on her lap, but not quite enough pace. She's only recently made the transition from bikes through to cars. She did a good job, but it was about warming up for the man himself, Carlos Sainz. El Matador, the Spanish WRC legend and Dakar winner coming into the super sector absolutely lit. There was no lifting for Sainz. Look at the effort putting in the car. Big inputs, chucking it left to right. He gets through all the mogul section through here, points the car and just gets on the gas, pitching it in. And it was such an impressive performance from him. Late on the brakes into all the crest dips, desperately trying to make up that time. In the end, the track conditions hadn't gone in his favour and it wasn't going to be enough to nick those five championship points. They'll have another opportunity again tomorrow during the shootout to bag those points with an excellent run through that middle sector. Look forward to seeing them go full send again on Sunday. End of the session then, Q2 done. Semi-finals and finals coming up tomorrow. This is how they stand. X44, RXR and Apt Cupra go through to Semi 1. Semi 2 will be JB, XC, Veloce and Excite. And the shootout will be Chip Ganassi Racing, Andretti United and Acciona Sainz.